We're oh. just talking about how Amelia doesn't know who Howard Stern is. No, 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 no. I feel like that rings a bell now. Now that I have it in my mind, I'm like, okay, maybe. He he is the fucking bell, pretty much. He is the bell. He is the king of audio. I believe, I think I used to hear, well, the reason I brought it up is I think I used to hear your mom on Stern. They always used to have wild conversations. Your mom's an outspoken person, as yeah. I'm sure you are very well aware. Yeah. I think that you need to go home to your mom and say, mom, I just went on the Skinny Confidential podcast and they told me about your interviews on Howard Stern and watch her face. Well, was it really sexual? Like, do I even want to listen? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't listened to her. I can't remember. I don't think. No, your mom's like, either he was either he was talking about her or with her. Always favorable. I think they got along. I think they're friends. I mean, it's been a long time. So Stern, like I used to listen to him. Back in the 90s. Yeah, we and don't. Then, she wasn't even born. No, so I wasn't. And then like in the 2000s. <laughs> when Were he you was really on, not? No, I wasn't. No, but when he switched to Sirius. She doesn't know what the 90s I used to listen to him back and forth when I drive to college because I went to Arizona and I go mm-hmm. back and forth between California and there. And I used to listen to him. And I, I, I just, I remember, I think she was either on there or something, called in or something. Well, mm. We also may remember her from Playboy too. She Iconic. was pregnant with my sister, so technically my sister's been in Playboy. Oh, um, my God. Yeah. Okay. It explains a little bit. So so give us a little bit of background, <clears throat> where you grew up, what your childhood okay. was like. Give us some context for anyone who's unfamiliar with you. And I'm going to have you go close like this. She, okay. He wants you there to you get go. right up in there. This is our first podcast. We're popping your cherry. Okay. Yes, you are. Um. So I grew up in L.A., Went to a progressive elementary hippie weird school that I'll probably end up sending my kids to one day. It was so weird. Um, I have a sister who's three years older than me. I have a brother who's 40, um, who is my dad's son. Um, then I went to an all girls school, which completely fucked me up, like really bad. Why? Really bad. Like, you know, I just think that at my progressive hippie elementary school, I was taught one thing. And then I went to an all girls school in the center of Brentwood and I was taught a completely different thing. And like they preached feminism so much, but I feel like it was one of those instances where they didn't really practice what they preached. And that's when I first started having more of a negative mindset. And when things started to go downhill, like I had the most amazing childhood ever. I was a super normal kid. Like, I loved jumping on the trampoline. It was dope. It was great. And then I went to this all-girls school, and all of a sudden, like, I'm in class, and I'm being taught that, you know, models are horrible, and they sexualize women in negative ways, and actresses are horrible. And, like, here I am sitting in my social history history class. I, I think that's what it was called or something in, like, ninth grade. And, like, there's literally a photo of my mom on the projector and they're like dissecting all of the bad things that like my mom has done did they not realize you were in the class no they did it's weird um all the weird bad things my mom has done representing women and blah 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 so then i was just kind of like this is really weird and then um i remember we would dissect like carl's jr weird ads and shit like that And I would just get so uncomfortable because not only, you know, was my mom brought up, but like I'm over here trying to be a model and everybody in my class knew that. And they're like basically looking at my family being like, everything you're doing is wrong, blah, blah, blah. So long story short, um, we ended up getting pulled out of the school. And I'm pretty sure if we didn't get pulled out, we would have been asked to leave. Um, they were just super non-accepting of what my family was doing in the industry. So I think for a long time, this sort of made me um, change my outlook on what I wanted to do. And it almost changed what I wanted to do. Um, Then when I went through my eating disorder, I feel like the reason why I was so outspoken and I really wanted to share my story was because I feel like you know, women's stories aren't shared enough. And I I realized that at my all-girls school, sitting there shaming women, not only body shaming women, but shaming women for, you know, embracing their sexuality. And Heidi Klum can eat her Carl's Jr. burger as sexually as she wants to for all we care. Like that doesn't need to be a negative thing unless she was forced to do it and she was uncomfortable and she didn't want to do it and blah, blah, blah. Like that doesn't have to be negative. That can be looked at as something very inspiring. And um, 
So anyways, went through my eating disorder, which was like short, and I'm super lucky about that. Um, And I don't even think that my eating disorder really was like based upon my body and my body image because I was like, my mom's fucking small. Like I was always small. Um, But I think it was like this all girl school like stuff that I went through and I was like just in a depressed state and I was just really confused. Anyways, go through my eating disorder, decide to share my story. I don't like talk to my mom about it or anything. I'm sitting in Cabo one day and we're at the Palmia and I'm like sitting in my room and I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to tell everyone on my Instagram right now that this is what I'm going through and this is what I went through because like here I am sitting on my bench at the resort in Cabo looking through my Instagram feed feeling so shitty about myself because I don't look like these girls and then I'm like, well, why are we all being lied to? Like why not just be that girl that's like this is what I'm going through. I know someone else is too. You're not alone X, Y, and Z. So I think I just decided to really – stand up for women and talk about what I'm going through so that others didn't feel alone like I did. But at the same time, that does come and bite me in the butt. Because at the same time, I don't know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. I'm literally just sharing the story that's happened to me. Um, So it's definitely scary and weird. Um, I also think a mistake I made Well, I I don't think it would take back anything that I did, but I think a mistake that I made was sharing my story while I was still going through it. Um, Because I hadn't healed, um, I think that it was a lot harder to really understand the message that I wanted to portray. And I think that like there's no black and white when it comes to an eating disorder. There's a lot that happens and goes on. Again, that's why I want to study psychology. I don't need to necessarily get a degree in it, but I just want to have some sort of understanding of like why not only does the human brain, but women's brains go through, you know, what I went through. You said something interesting. You said that it, your school that they that it was all about feminism. I noticed I was telling Michael this the other day, like we talk so much about feminism, but sometimes I notice when it doesn't fit in to some people that are feminist box, I put that mm-hmm. in quotes, then it doesn't work for them. Was that being a feminist then? Yeah. I just noticed like, for instance, I'll give an example. We went to the bunny ranch and we interviewed Alice Little, who's the head bunny mm-hmm. there. And we really wanted to showcase how smart and well-spoken and articulate and amazing she is. And we got backlash from that. And some of it was from feminists. And I'm like, this is so hypocritical because part of being a feminist is embracing all women, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that's your school. It was sort of like that. It's not like you fitting into the box. It's the problem with self-righteous people is like they're self-righteous and they say like, and they're all for progress and change until it doesn't fit their version of progress and change. Exactly. And that's, that, that's the, that's the irony of of all of it. I was really appalled. Yeah. And it's sad because I'm pretty sure that my sister and I were the only people that clocked it. You know, what's funny is like, I running Dear Media, I get asked all the time, like, well, how can a man work with all these women? And like, you know, I, that's like a default question that a lot of publications and a lot of news outlets ask me. And I think like what I've been doing is like the more interesting question for me to ask back to them is like, why do you think that's so strange for men to work with women? Right, exactly. And like, I think we've gotten to this place where like, it's like, you can't work with women. You're a man. You can't, you can't do, work with these um, shows because you're a man. You can't do that. Cause, and I'm like, well, how have we gotten to a place where that's not okay? And I think like that's the whole problem with society. It's like we've gotten so far. Where like my goal here is like men and women can work together to amplify women. Like if that's mm-hmm. if that's not a good cause, I don't know what else is. Mm-hmm. Do you think because Michael and I have been having a lot of conversations about raising where we want to raise our baby? Oh my god! Do you Zaza. think that LA has to do though also with what you've gone through? Because you're in the spotlight, you have this school that seems very weird. Do you think just being surrounded by LA has anything to do with what you've been through? A hundred percent. I think that, like I said, I would never take anything back. I would never do anything over. But I find myself thinking about the simplicity of a small town a lot. And I find myself thinking of like, what would have happened if I was born in Oregon, in Medford, where my mom was born? Would I have gone through these things? Would I have, you know, this depth in, you know, 
perspective in my mind at such a young age or, you know, would I be kind of, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but like, you know, would I just not be who I am today? And then it's like, but the simplicity of that life is so nice. Like you don't really have to worry about all of these small things that really don't matter in life. And I think that that was really hard for me growing up is because a lot of people I felt like that I was surrounded with just weren't really there like I was, if that makes sense. Because I feel like it really is all about how you were raised in LA and just so many people I feel like just weren't raised in the way that I can relate to. Um, Though I feel like LA's really made me good and bad. Um, Bad because I have standards that I shouldn't have growing up in LA. Um, In what ways? With with, with, in like with what? You know, like I remember when I got my first car, um, I was so excited. I got a Mercedes CLA 250 Sport. And I was so excited. You know, it was like the coolest car any of my friends had. Yes, I was paying for it, but like my parents, you know, got it for me. Mm -hmm. And then I had to pay for the down payments or the lease, whatever. I certainly don't even know what it's called. But um, so like all my other friends, you know, I was so lucky and blessed to have a Mercedes growing up where I, where I, you know, I, I grew up in like a nice place, but like the friends that I hung out with and chose to hung out with, hang out with weren't necessarily as wealthy as some people in LA. And I loved that. And that's pretty much all I knew and was surrounded with growing up. And then I met another group of people who I really hope don't listen to this podcast. And Everybody listens to this fuck, podcast. Do they I really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I think they do, honestly. So then I met this other group of friends and they're all like pulling up in their G-Wagons with like their Rolexes around their wrists, like at 18 and like all this shit. And I'm just like, whoa. Like I just went from being the cool girl because I had a Mercedes CLA 250 Sport. Now I'm like the poor girl who doesn't have a G-Wagon. Tell the pissant story. Well, no, there's always, like, we always talk about, I mean, I don't want to interrupt your story, but there's always, like, a bigger fish. And it's, I think that it's good for people to understand that because they look and they see, oh, like, this person, you know, like, right when you think you made it to the top, you, like, turn to the left and there's somebody that's much higher or lower. And I think that's the beautiful thing about life is, like, just when you think, my, you know, my dad always says, like, just when you think you made it, you realize you're a fucking piss ant because mm-hmm. there's always somebody bigger. But I think that's why you got to – people have to start practicing being happy with where they are exactly. because there's always – there's different levels to this shit. I mean, um, but it's – I mean, that's – Lauren likes that because it's like it get, every time you think, like, oh, I'm the shit I made it. Right. You got to remember, like, got to check yourself a bit. But I also think, like, that's one of the things that I would have definitely rather not had in my childhood because I think that I, to some extent – did come out a bit materialistic. And in times I catch myself being like, Amelia, wait, like this doesn't matter. Let's pull it back because this isn't what life's about. And I catch myself saying all the time, like this isn't real life. Like I, it's like, I think that money is some kind of like simulation or something. Like I'm always like in my head, this isn't real life. This isn't what matters. But you know, what's funny. I have to tell you what's funny. I was telling Michael the other day that it's so predictable to me just how, how some people from L.A. like drive up like you just said in their G-Wagon with like 800 diamonds up their arm with the huge watch and, and, and all the stuff. And I will say you walked in, you're wearing a fucking like white T-shirt, some jeans. You're totally my, dressed down. My so converse. Yeah, she's wearing like she's just so dressed down. I don't like that to I me. I don't even have makeup on. I mean, I did cover no, this you massive pimple, but we're going to get into pimples. Don't worry. I, we have questions. <laughs> okay, great. Um, But you're you're so um like the opposite of superficial mm-hmm. the way you look. So that's interesting that you say that. Yeah. But I think that has a lot to do with my mom. Like I remember growing up, I was always sort of confused and, and I, I would ask her frequently. And when I say growing up, maybe I was like eight. And I'd be like, mom, like, why don't you wear makeup? Like all the other moms that drop the, the kids off at school. Like, why do all my friends' moms wear makeup and you don't? And I remember she was just like, you know, like, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like the feeling of it on my face. Like, I don't feel like I need to wear makeup to leave the house. And like, what, like moms at like 6.30 a.m. like have their full face oh, makeup fuck on. fuck no. Do you know what I mean? Fuck like, no. No, no, no. I'm not going to be one of those moms. I don't give a shit about um, that shit. 
But so I would always ask her, but not only would she not wear makeup, it would be like I would have my friends over and like my mom would walk downstairs in her full on thong, (laughs) white shirt, nipples out. And I'd just be like, okay, like, but I wouldn't think anything about it because it was normal. Like it was what my mom did. And now I'm, I look back and I'm like, fuck, like my friends must have been so uncomfortable. But that being said, I think I was just so like brought up around someone that like does not give a flying fuck. Um, From what I've seen, I think that's an accurate yeah, description. Yeah, it's pretty much the only one I have for her. Um, but yeah, so I just, I don't either. But sometimes I wish I did because like sometimes my friends will make, like the other day I got my eyebrows laminated and my eyelashes like curled or whatever. They look amazing. No, it was a long time ago. Oh, okay. But thank the you. Li- I want to get it was a month ago. After seeing you. Um. Oh no, I'll go into that. Okay. Don't. But anyways, my friend goes. <laughs> my friend goes. Wow, you look so pretty today. And I'm like, oh, thanks. She's like, I've never seen you like this. And I was like, wait, are you are you kidding me? Like, because when I tell you, like, I don't care. Like, it's bad. Like, I really don't. Like, this is me, like, you, dressed a lot. But like, you have to have some kind of I don't care element to be on Housewives. So, like. I really don't care on that show. When you put yourself. But I got to start. No, I, I don't think you do. I oh, think I do. it gives a real depiction of real life, like, behind the scenes. Uh-huh. So how when you go in to film that, do you just not give a shit about what you look like, what you say? Like, are you just, like, whatever? Like, they're going to edit it like shit anyway. I literally don't care at all. Um, My mom will text me and she'll be like, okay, like, can you come over tomorrow and film, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, sure. I go in my pajamas to my mom's house. I'll, like, throw on some jeans that I have at my mom's house. Like, I literally don't think about it. If I have a pimple like I do today, I'll cover it. But, like, I'm not going to put foundation on and, like, my contour. Though, I need to start because now looking back, I'm like, shit, like – I I need to start caring a bit more. But at the same time, like, again, because I grew up without my mom wearing makeup, I'm like, I don't feel prettier when I wear makeup. You know what I mean? Like, I feel fine without makeup. So I just don't really give a shit. But then I look back and I'm like, oh, God, I should have given a shit. Do you watch the show when it's live after you've been on it? Or are you like, this is triggering? No, no, no. Though my sister and I just moved in together and – um. For the past like three weeks, we have watched it only because like I, I'm sitting on my couch, I'm having dinner, and all of a sudden my fucking Instagram will be flooded with like a hundred comments, two hundred likes, like just going at me, and I'm like, what did I say? Then I'll have to rewatch it, and because my mom doesn't tell me because she doesn't want me to get stressed out, like she's not gonna be like, you had a bad episode, like whatever, but like. Today, she was like, yeah, so, like, tomorrow you're on the show. Does it, is it on Wednesdays? I don't even know. She was like, yeah, like, tomorrow you're on the show. Like, don't worry, though. Like, it's okay. But she's like, don't talk about it. Like, don't comment on it. And I'm like, okay. Like, I won't. Because I do struggle with, like, biting my tongue at the same time. Because, Let me like, ask you this, because I think about it now with, with with our child. Like, Lauren and I are not super public people, but we're public in some regards, right? Mm-hmm. And I think about, like, we bo- both grew up with parents that weren't public. So, like, we had childhood where was, like, a lot of privacy mm-hmm. and, like, weren't in public eye. You have obviously grown up, grown up in an opposite way where, like, your mom and dad are both very public and you've had to grow up mm-hmm. with that dynamic. So, obviously, you maybe can't relate to the way we grew up. We can't relate to the way you grew up. But thinking about a child now... Mm-hmm. Do you think one way is better, worse? Like, do you wish that you had more privacy, which less? Like, even now, good, bad? Because I think about it all the time. It's like Lauren and I kind of, in a way, signed up for what we do and putting mm-hmm. ourselves out there. But the kid obviously has didn't. not. Didn't. Yeah. And yeah. I think about that a lot because I'm like, I would freak out if somebody, like, started bothering my kid. You, you know, know what, I mean? what I say to people? Um, a lot of people ask me, like, how was it growing up with your parents in the public eye? And – I don't know, you you had an answer to a question earlier that reminded me of it. And I'm just like, well, how is it not having your parents in the public eye? Because just as they don't know True. my life, I don't know theirs. Because it wasn't like I grew up half and half. Like I grew up full force in the public eye. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know any different. But I turned out fine, I think. I think I'm fine. <laughs> um, I think you turned I'm a out good more kid. than fine. Um, no, there's a few people. Like there's some there's there some people are. like kids that have grown up and I think that they've done a good job. Um, but you know why but I that's think, not always common. I think I'm fine because my parents were so open because there are so many celebrity 
families and celebrity children who I know personally, and they're just like so private that we have no idea what's going on behind the curtains. And I think that's when things can kind of go astray. That is such a good point. It's like your secrets make you sick. Yeah. That is so true. Like my family, we don't have anything to hide. So it doesn't really stress me out. But I feel like when you're spending so much time and effort on like trying to contain your lawsuits or your secrets or like whatever you need to contain, like that's when it gets like crazy. It's so funny you say that because we talk, I talk about this in business and I'm like, if you're in any, I mean, any kind of public person, any kind of business person, I either think it's like, you're so far behind the closed door. Nobody knows who you are. Or if you're out there, you got to be so fucking out there that it's like, you know, like at this point, there's not like people ask me all the time, like, hey, well, are you happy doing this? I'm like, at this point, there's nothing I haven't said. It's all out there. You can do Google everything I've ever done. So I'm not like, I'm not hiding from anything. And it's freeing in a way because a lot of people like we're in this weird time and place where some people that have been private are now kind of in public. I think that's why you're seeing so much shit come out about people. It's like you can't hide anymore. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. There's a lot of girls out there that are listening that are struggling or have struggled with an eating disorder. What were the three most helpful things that got you? And I don't, you said it's not black and white, so I don't want to say through it, but what are the three most helpful tools in your toolbox? I think the most important thing is you need to want to get better. And I know that this is. A difficult one because a lot of people probably don't and it's it's really hard um but for me it was like waking up whatever day I woke up looking in the mirror and being like holy guacamole you are really skinny and it is very scary and obviously I mean I guess it's not obvious but I woke up one morning like at my childhood best friend's house it was like seven in the morning and my parents my sister they're all outside like waiting to pick me up and I'm like what are you doing here like it's Saturday morning and they're like get in the car we're going to UCLA and I was like oh my god and in that moment I was like I'm gonna rebel like they're crazy I don't have an eating disorder UCLA to to get treatment yes okay sorry lack of clarification UCLA to get treatment um anyways we I, I don't think I've ever gone in depth in this story but we show up It's like this really scary old man's office. I guess he's like famous and like eating disorder, but like he's like hoarder vibes. Like could it not have been a more uncomfortable vibe for me? And I sat there and there was just like books everywhere, even on the floor, like everywhere. Scary, scary vibes. And he looked at me and I really took this man seriously. Like he was very legit scary. And he looked at me and he was like, so – yeah, basically at this rate, in about four months, you're going to be 45 pounds and you're going to be dead. And I just remember being like, wait, I'm sorry. That's even like, that's humanly possible. Like I could get to 45 pounds, like thinking that in my head. And um, then I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And then like, I just snapped out of it. Like I was so lucky that I was just like, yeah, don't want to be 45 pounds, not going to be, you know, this type of person. I'm not going to ruin my life because of whatever issues I'm having. Like, I, you don't need to be skinny to, like, live your best life. Like, it's either skinny and die or, like, happy and be who you are. When – do you remember – is there, like, an epiphany of when it started or was it something slow? Like, how does that kind of thing start? I don't know a lot about it. Okay. Does it, does it, is it, like, something that, like, you just start restricting cheese and then all of a sudden you're playing no. meat? And, like, okay, so – um, I think I was like 14 or 15 walking out of like American rag. Is that what the store is called? Is that a store? Yeah. With my mom. And, um, I was wearing jeans and like this cute Harley Davidson shirt. And like, I was kind of in my awkward stage in life and, uh, paparazzi was shooting us and I didn't really think anything of it. I've had that happen since I was, you know, born wasn't a big thing but then I remember like that's when snapchat and daily mail and all these things were like you know a thing and you can actually see where the photos went opposed to growing up you know I just knew someone was taking photos of me but I didn't know where they went so like I you'd t- have to get a magazine to see right where exactly okay. so like I took it upon myself to just like look it up I think or like someone sent it to me I don't know so I saw these photos and I was just like <gasps> like 
oh my gosh, Amelia, what's happening? Like, this is so bad. And then I remember crying to my mom about them. And there was this thing on the internet that I had found of a model that I looked up to at the time, basically saying that her trick is doing the master cleanse. And she always does the master cleanse before a huge job. So I was like, okay, great. Like, I'm going to do the master cleanse. It's going to be great, whatever. I did the master cleanse for 25 days. Holy shit. Wait, isn't that just lemon water and cayenne? Yeah, 25 days. You Uh, drink just uh, lemon and cayenne water for 25 days? Yeah. Wow. Um, So I did that. Then I- No food. Occasional soup. Jesus. Maybe like two sweet potato fries. Then I started working out a lot. And when I mean like working out a lot, like- I'd have my master cleanse and if I had popcorn with one of my friends, because like I was 15, like I was hanging out with people. It was summer. Like I was still, you know, living my best life. If I would have popcorn, like even skinny pop with my friends, like I I would, if even if it was one in the morning, like I would go in the gym because I was living at my parents' house and I would just like work out, run on the treadmill. Um, and your, did your parents know like what, like, were like, what is she doing No, they were there? asleep. Oh, they they were had no there. idea. Okay. And so then I would start working out during the day and then they would like see it. And then my mom comes in the gym one day and she's like, what's happening? Like, are you okay? Like your sister thinks you're anorexic. And then I was like, no, like Delilah just doesn't want me to ever be skinnier than her. So like this was an ongoing thing for a long time where they didn't know that there was actually anything wrong because I would just be like, no, like Delilah's trying to sabotage me and like blah, 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 this and that. And like, obviously she's not like, she's not a psychopath. Like, that didn't cross her mind. She was genuinely concerned for me. So... And how many years apart are you guys? We're three. Okay. Now I love her and she's my best friend. But, like, there were definitely rocky moments. Um, But so, master cleanse. Then I started incorporating soup also. I would weigh myself every single morning. Big fat no. Like, now I notice, even though I've been recovered for, like, I don't know two years almost now even when there's a scale in my presence or like that it's fine if there's a scale in my presence but once I decide to go on it like I'm fucked my day's fucked I am fucked even when I go to the doctor I don't let them weigh me that's so interesting that you said that because my friend lost 65 pounds and I was telling him that I'm in the midst of losing 20 pounds and I was weighing myself every morning. No, but like sometimes you have to to know no, like he the, said, sca- don't. the gauge. He said, do though. not weigh yourself, Lauren. I so I haven't weighed myself for, since he said that. That's it was a good. month ago because he said when you get on that scale, it uh, spikes your, your cortisol. cortisol. You gain weight from the mm-hmm. cortisol. So he told me to get off the scale. That's so you, – yes. you said it like spiked your cortisol all day. No, like 100%. And that's another interesting thing because once I did recover from my eating disorder, I – I immediately gained 50 pounds in six months. And like, to be honest, I was still starving myself when I like recovered in the beginning, like the first three months of my recovery. Like I was still eating like just an apple a day. And then like I would have like a bowl of vegetables at night and like maybe with some sriracha and like a drizzle of olive oil if things got like pretty crazy. But anyways, so I gained 50 pounds in six months and I was like, I know something's wrong with me. Like, I just know something is wrong with me. I was asleep all day long. I was so mean to everyone. Like, and I was still eating such sparse amounts of food. Like, my dad explains it. Like, I was literally eating like a a baby bird. Like, I was unwell. But I just kept gaining weight. And um, that was really obviously not even on, you know, it's hard on anyone, but then like to be in recovery from my eating disorder, to be gaining 50 pounds so rapidly. And I think that this is a reason why so many girls don't want to get the help and they don't want to get better because the treatment centers misinform you about the steps to take to heal. And I think I was so nervous about healing because I thought there would be like an IV in my arm of like just nutrients or like I'd have to stuff my face with a bag of Cheetos like every two hours and like I was just freaking out about it. But it's not about that. It's just about like you have to get your body out of this fight or flight mode. Otherwise, it's just going to get so bad. And what I just like really want to aim to inform people is like the longer you're anorexic – the more detrimental effects it's going to actually have on your body. 
And another thing, like I said, like I wish I had come out about my experience when I was done having it because I think I would have chosen a lot of different words and I would have said different things because I have suffered so many environmental issues in my body now between my hormone imbalance, between my thyroid being inflamed constantly, between my Hashimoto's, between my depression and anxiety that I now have. Like nobody needs to go through that. It is just a waste of time and a waste of two pills every morning. So you said that you were gaining 50 pounds and your dad didn't understand. Was that from your thyroid? Mm -hmm. I just got diagnosed with low thyroid. Is that what you have? Mm -hmm. Is Hashimoto's low thyroid? Yeah. Okay. So basically, I just remember working out, eating like I did when I was anorexic, not allowing myself to heal because I was like gaining even more weight than I had ever gained in my life. And then I just remember one day I was like breaking down and I was laying down on my parents' kitchen counter and I was like, something's wrong. Something's wrong with me. I know something is wrong. Take me to a doctor. And... My mom was like, no, you're fine. I just think that, you know, you have a new boyfriend. I was dating this guy at the time and she was like, you have a new boyfriend. Maybe you're happy and you're like eating more than you think you really are. Or maybe you're just like not really getting as no- enough physical exercise, which you know what is valid because in my family, we do have to exercise. We don't have the most incredible metabolisms. It's kind of like a thing that we have to exercise. So my my parents' first thought was, okay, maybe like, you know, you're not eating right for your body or you're not exercising enough. So I tried doing all those things for a little bit, still nothing. I'm just like gaining and gaining and gaining. And that I think was so hard, being in the public eye, gaining weight um, at such a young age. Like that's just so fucked up. Like I hated that so much. Um And then I went to a doctor and he was like, whoa, like your levels are crazy. And then told me that it was caused from my eating disorder. But enough about eating disorders. There's more things to talk about. We can talk about (laughs) more things than eating disorders. I just have one question about thyroid. Mm -hmm. Did you go to a hormone specialist or a doctor? Because I went, I I have been told that going to a hormone specialist is way more important. No, no, no. You need to go to my endocrinologist. Okay. Okay. The reason I'm so obsessed with him is because there are so many endocrinologists where they take your lab results and they look at them and then they're like, okay, well, you have enough T3, you have enough T4, you shouldn't really be having these symptoms, so I'm going to keep you off of medication. And I'm not the biggest believer in medication. I truly am not. But my thyroid doctor sits there for an hour with you. He listens. He talks to you. He takes notes. He looks at your lab results and then he's like, but how are you feeling? And then you explain how you've been feeling, if you're lethargic, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. Then he's like, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. Or if your lab results don't really correspond with your symptoms, who cares about the lab results? It's really about how you feel and what's going on. How long did it take for you to feel better? Four months. Okay, because I'm on month two and I was like eating. I mean, I was eating not a, like I was eating enough, but mm-hmm. not a ton and exercising every day and the weight was not coming off. You know what I will say? I've noticed I haven't eaten an egg in almost three years. I heard that's not good for your thyroid. I love eggs. No, I know. I But I really do think it's like – but there's obviously like no scientific evidence to back that, so I can't really – you know, push that a lot, but eggs really destroy my body. Like not only medical medium says that. Yeah. 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 Not only do they make me have strep throat in random places of my body, which I feel like we can get into. What do you mean strep? What is that? What is that? What, hold on. We got to explain that. But... <laughs> okay. So I was at Coachella one year and I had a nipple piercing Oh, I heard that fucking hurts. Oh, it really does. It got caught in a door once. It was horrible. Oh, (laughs) God. I know. It was horrible. Oh, my God. So I'm at Coachella. I'm at Erica Jane's Moschino Party. And (laughs) I'm, like, living my best life with my friends. And um, Another low-profile character. Yep. And um, there's, like, a balcony without a railing. And this is all very important. There's a balcony without a railing. And I really want this, like fried chicken sandwich that's being passed around so I'm like going to grab the fried chicken sandwich and then someone pushes me and I'm at the side of the balcony and all there is is like the railing is like a hedge that is like not actually there and I'm like 
I'm like high up. Like say this is the ground and this is like the ledge. Like I'm here and there's just like ground here. Like nothing to stop me or save me. So anyways, I get pushed. My leg like falls in the crack and then my friend grabs me like this and then like my nipple piercing like just, you know, gets caught, but I don't feel it. Ugh. And I'm like, you know, it's fine. Like, I don't know why I didn't feel it. I wasn't on drugs, but like, I just didn't feel it. And um, I was eating so many eggs that weekend. Like every morning I would wake up and have eggs because like eggs is such an easy breakfast to have before like going to rage. You know what I mean? Like just have my eggs. So then I get home. And I'm like, mom, like, oh my God, I really don't feel well. And she's like, well, you went to Coachella, so you have to go to school. Sorry. And I'm like, no, mom, like, I really don't feel well. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> I, honestly, I don't even think I've ever done that. So I'm sitting in my class, my homeschool class, and it literally looks like this. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, woof, it's hot in here. And like, it was notorious for being very cold in this place. And I'm like, ooh, it's really hot in here. And I'm like literally about to faint. And my teacher's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. It's really hot in here. I had an 104 fever, 104. My left boob was out to here, okay? <laughs> oh, I was 16 and had mastitis, whatever the heck that oh, is. Oh man, I heard that's oh, the worst. Oh my gosh. I will literally show you a photo of my boob after. It was the worst thing I've ever been through. I went to the emergency room. They told me you have a kidney infection. Oh, cool, because it got in, your nipple got infected. No, I didn't have a kidney infection. Had to go to Cedar's special disease doctor, and he was like, "Yeah, like you have strep in your left breast." So, anyways, when I eat eggs, I either get strep throughout or I get strep in parts of my body. Also, I was twelve hours away from going sepsis, so like I will. Wait, never... hold on. Did I miss something? Because did you nipple get torn from the nipple? Oh, okay, okay. Ring? Is that why you got yes, infected, yes, yes. or did Sorry. you, or the eggs did it? No, I missed something. Okay, the nipple piercing being pulled caused a small abrasion uh, okay. in my body. I already had the strep living in my system, oh, so got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it went to that part of my body because it was an open wound. No, when I tell you, like my boobs were this big. No, it's like, a real thing. And like. I didn't just get those down like naturally. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like I've never talked about this, but like infections I, move quick I too. Had to, I had to fully get surgery. No, listen. I, what that could have yeah. killed you because I mean, I've never talked about that. It could have killed you. How do you get surgery? Though? I had to get a breast reduction. No, Lauren, it could kill you because this this scar. Wait, on my, hold on. I've what? never said anything like I've never because said that, you, and I think my mom's gonna kill me. But I've never said that. But it's, it's because you had the infection and it was yes. close to your heart. It's like I had this scar right here on my hand when I was mm -hmm. young. And oh my god, you can't compare the scar no, 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 on your wanna, hand to this. No, Are you no, he, fucking kidding? Yes, you can. I will compare it because <laughs> what will. happened was I got I was young Welcome and dumb. To, and this is was what just, it's like. Was just being a, a dumb kid, and mm -hmm. it got infected. Yeah. But I lied to my parents. So I didn't want to tell them how I did it. I was being stupid, and. So like, okay, whatever, just stitch it up. And it got infected. Mm -hmm. The same exact thing happened. It blew up like a watermelon. And watermelon, I yeah. I was like one day away from the guy being like, yo. Hold on. My but doctor told me I was going to die yeah. in 12 hours. I this was like, is what? This different though. She, no, she had to actually get no, surgery. Listen, no, but like it's the, similar. No, I did really have to, I had to get the stuff one more day if I would have waited. Did you have to get IV drips? Yeah, I had to get all the IV <sighs> stuff. They had to stab the hand with like three needles to get the infection. It's horrible. It moves up your body. Uh, What's scary for you is that it was so close to your heart. And it, it was my heart, left boob. Yeah, if it gets your heart, it kills you. That's why, I, listen, I know this. I'm not just telling an irrelevant story about me. <laughs> Wait, so they had to drain it? I don't get what they had to like, do. Yeah, you have like to that. get all the infection. The, listen, back in the, the day, infection was still there. If this was 1860, she would have been dead. And it made my boobs so uneven. Like this boob was this big, and then this boob was this big, and then it was like, oh my god! Like, am I really gonna have to live the rest of my life with my left boob significantly larger than my my right boob? And Did then they I was draw like, the circle no. around the red area? Yep. Yeah. See, Lauren, I know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, I can't and believe they, you're comparing your. They hand measured it by centimeters and took and photos. It was, and it's spreading and spreading. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it is honestly that is some of the worst pain ever because it's like almost like your skin is trying oh, to explode. It's hot and uh -huh. it's veiny. You my, get fever. You're I've sweating. Never in my whole entire life. So this is why I do not eat eggs. You should try it. Maybe. Also, I was born with Epstein Barr, um, which I'll tell you why after. Um, and that like has the strep cock blah, 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 living I need to know if I, that, if I have that. They just told me I have low thyroid. How did I find out? I did you get delirious? Bar? Were you delirious? I'm, I'm going to oh go to your Oh my God, was I delirious? See, did you get delirious? Yeah. I I'm feel writing like my... this down. Okay. Or you can tell me later. His whatever name is Penjamin Cohan. I think my friend from Pilates told me about him. I've heard he's the best. The best. I've, I've actually heard of I him I don't even before. remember how I found him, but... 
I am so glad I did. Like, so lucky because I I listened to all your ads, obviously, because I listened to your podcast. And what is that ad that's like um a called like a name of like a branch or a bush or something? And it's like time with your doctor. Oh, uh, parsley health. Parsley? Yeah, parsley health. Parsley health, everybody. Parsley. I remembered it with like a branch affiliated. What's with What's the discount code? Parsley Great. health. Parsley health. Skinny. Parsley give health. Give a free spot. Okay, but it's promo code skinny. <laughs> okay, wait, but you get so much more time with your doctor mm -hmm. a year is what you were saying. But this doctor, I get so much time with him every single time. I just, I feel so blessed after listening to your Parsley Health. I didn't realize. So it took you four normal. months to feel better. Four months to feel better. I started losing. You better get your agent involved. They're gonna Parsley better pay you. <laughs> no. Um, I started losing weight after like four months, and I could really notice in my ankles. Like my ankles were this round. They had no, like definition to them and my sister will still like still make fun of me she's like why did you ever care about what your ankles looked like and I'm like you don't realize it until you actually have cankles that like your ankles have no definition I remember I was doing a photo shoot and I was on set and I heard them talking about my ankles and I was like wait you're lying like it, I thought I was the only one that saw this and they're like we need to add more definition in our ankles and I was like I am out like Jesus I think oh modeling, my God. I, I've talked about this and I'm probably a weird character to talk about. So I think it's like one of the hardest things you can do. And there's a lot of people that like, you know, people yeah. think modeling's easy, mm -hmm. but you're just sitting there for hours on end with all these people dissecting your body. I can barely oh take God. a Christmas photo. You know what I mean? Like I fucking no, lose it. Um, and I consider myself like a, someone that's capable. I can't do pictures. It's and not I just think, I, I can't either. Modeling is not so just hard though because you have to stand there. It's hard because you have to have the right standing angle. Standing there yes. is nothing. And standing there is nothing. It's that's the, the right angle. Listen, if my daughter was ever doing pictures and like so I heard some asshole talk about the, the ankles, I'd probably go get in a fist fight. I'd be mm. like, hey, you well, over You're there. not going to be on set. Be like, hey, you, Jim, you, you, you quit that shit. She's done with you and she's like 15. No, no, so no. I'll be there. That. I'm going to I'm gonna be like. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. so no, true. I did not like my dad when I was 15. I'm going to chain myself to her and just like follow her. Really I want to know more about your modeling career. Are you still doing it? What's going on with that? Okay. So I think modeling is like, do you ever think about like, you know what? If I were to die like tomorrow, what would make me happy? Or if I were to die in a year, like what do I need to accomplish to make me happy? For me, that is modeling. Like, I don't know why I have always had this just like fascination with it. And for me, it's not about the money. It's very much not about the followers, not about the clout, not about anything besides the fact that I have always been so artistic and I have never been able to express that because I'm so shitty at drawing. What other forms of art are there? Like, I don't know. I just always say like, I'm so bad at drawing. I'm so bad at editing things. Like I'm so bad at photography. I, I hadn't ever found like my outlet until when I was like 13, I finally did. And I was like, wow, like I really enjoy this form of self-expression. But I think what makes me so angry is like this culture of Instagram models and like, you know, all these things. And now it's just like all the people that actually want and are passionate about the, the art of, you know, the clothing, the art of the designer and the history of the clothing and the designer. Like I remember... I think I was 13 and my mom's friend from Hermes, his name's Michael, in Paris took us to like um, the top of the first Hermes store in Paris and like we got to see where the Hermes family had picnics and we got to see, you know, everything from the horse saddles that inspired the bags and the leather and certain jewelry to like the dog collars that inspired the bracelets and things like that and I just was so fascinated by that. I, I knew that I didn't want to design clothes but – it just really, really grew such a huge appreciation that I was like, I need to do this. Like, I want to be a part of this space because I don't feel like, like there's not that much. I feel like when you think about Hermes or when you think about fashion, these things like you, or at least I just affiliated it with wealthy people. I didn't affiliate it with the history that was actually behind the family and the brand itself. And, you know, things that went down during the war that would, um, certain wars that would, you know, depict what they designed or influence these things. And I just think it's so fascinating that we still have so many of these brands who now have moved on to different designers because a lot of the designers, the original designers have passed. And I don't know what it is, but it's like I, I have to do it, you know? I think that it's your parents are both performers. 
Yes, I think so too. And I was always like, I'm not acting. Like, sorry, but there's no way. Like, I always pushed that away. And I was like, I'm never acting. My parents forced me to go to this acting school called you called Yada and sorry Yada, but I hated you. <laughs> and like I really did so much. Um, that was horrible. And it gave me so much anxiety. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this. And then growing up, everyone would say, Do you want to be in the industry? Blah blah. And I'm like, no, like, but I didn't know what I wanted to be. I just knew that like I either wanted to be a therapist or like I wanted to do something else that was artistic. So you moved to New York. And you, mm-hmm. you went to New York to model? I'm No. I moved to New York because my dad went to Yale. My brother went to Princeton. My dad's family went to Stanford. Wow. I went to New York because- What a bunch of dummies. I know. They're so stupid. I went to New York because I was like, I, you know, like, I just got to be the kid that gets, you know, goes to school. Like, my dad was always- I went on my first tour to Yale when I was 11. I met the dean of Yale, okay? 11. And here I am. Like, I'm so not into school. Like- no, no, and no. And so anyways, my sister got into NYU. She moved to New York. Like, my family, my parents were so excited. Like, oh, my God, Delilah's going to NYU. This is crazy. Like, the girl had Ds in high school. Like, we're, st- you know, we're surprised. But anyways, and she did Wait, her- how the fuck does that happen? And I she, would, she did it herself. She, like, cleaned her act up and was just like, you know, I'm, she studied for the SATs, like, no tomorrow. And I watched her, like, kill herself over it. So I was like, okay. I'm not going to take the SATs, but I will apply to the new school because, like, that's that was always, like, my dream school. And I could study psychology and at the same time take classes at Parsons for fashion, blah, blah, blah. I get there and, like, it's great and all, but I'm in the midst of fashion week. I have a psych, I have a psych um, paper due. I have to turn in so much homework for, like, my English class. I have to read and write, like, a five-page essay and, like, I am in the middle of fashion week, meaning I'm waking up at 7 a.m. and I'm going to bed at 3 in the morning. Like, I literally eat – I'm going to eat my dinner at 1 in the morning and then I'm going to get in bed completely exhausted exhausted after wiping my makeup off for 30 minutes in my bathroom, then getting in the shower. Anyways, it just really wasn't manageable. And then I would wake up and then I'd be like, oh, my God. And I think I sort of had this cloud of, like, you know what, like – maybe I don't need to do this come over me. And it wasn't like I ever felt superior because like I never feel better than people because we're all equal. But it was more, I just thought, do I really need to be investing my time? Do I need to be spending my own money on this school thing? If like, I don't, I never saw myself graduating too. I was like, I'm going to go for my parents' sake, make them happy. But like, I'm not doing the full four years. I always knew that. So then I was just kind of like, what's the point? Though, I do regret moving back. Um, I really couldn't handle it. I was in a really deep, dark place in my life, and I didn't realize that. Right after I moved home, um, I got diagnosed with, like, depression and anxiety, and I went on Lexapro, which has just, like, changed my life so, so much. And I was super anti antidepressants for a long time. But then I learned about some cool things in my psych class for the month that I was there, and then I was open to them and they've changed my life um but now I could one year later I could for sure see myself being there again but even with everything that's going on in the world with coronavirus you you wish that you were back there no 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 no, no. if the world if was- the world was back to normal it's been a year since I tried I was most definitely not ready since then I've lived on my own twice I lived at the aka which is right there mm, kind of sad miss it there and um <laughs> is that the one with the big like balcony by, yeah, it's by it's Equinox? Like, yeah, it's, well, it's like that blue one over there that like has the weird windows and is the weird shape, you know? That looks Anyways, cool. Anyways, yeah, it was really nice. You know, I was living the luxurious life and then I was like, you know, probably shouldn't be paying for this. Like, this is a lot of money for nothing. So then I moved in with my sister. But anyways, I, I just, I was sitting there in my new apartment in New York that I was so blessed to have just having a panic attack like oh my god I'm growing up why am I living alone oh my god like just freaking out and now like today I was getting a having a shower getting ready to come here and I was thinking because I got like a memory on my snapchat of like one year ago today I was in New York and I was like ew like why did I think all these things like why was I so stressed out about growing up like no I was like unwell that's maybe because you now are on the Lexapro and you have clarity and you can look back on it yeah but I just think it was such a big jump for me to like not only move out of my parents' house, but like move out of, you know, the state that I've been living in my whole entire life and just like start a new life. Like, oh, I Are your parents happy that you're back here? 
very happy and they were so supportive. I mean, I thought my dad, the Yale guy, you know, was going to be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you've only been there for a month, blah, blah, blah. He was like, yeah, come home. Like, Your dad seems so chill on the show. He really we is. need a little bit more Harry on the show. Can I you push him in front know. of the camera? No, he won't do it. He, he doesn't want to do it. Mm-mm. Okay, I, I told you this earlier, but did you know that your mother taught me how to give a blowjob with the coin? And she taught me and she taught my sister. Yes. And yes. yeah, she honestly. And Lauren, you are not, I don't think you need to teach that to her. I, I, I honestly don't need to know tell, uh, how tell, the dips are. Out of 10, how good's my blowjob? No, it's a 10. It's a 10. Listen, <laughs> no, I, put, I think it's a fucking I put 11. the fucking ring on it. It's true. No. Should I thank your mom? Should I send her a thank you card? The last God. time I gave you one, you said, I, are you the who? <laughs> Lisa Renna, thank uh, you so Lisa much. Lisa Renna, let's sell Lisa Renna's book out. So this is a vintage book from the 90s. Vin. Vintage. It's vintage. I got it off Amazon when I saw Lisa Renna back on the Housewives. I was like, oh, she has a book called like Renovation. Stop. Wait, this is from the 90s. No, I swear it's from like 2004. Maybe 2004. Oh. So it's from it's from Wait, a it's while like, ago. It's old. It's, it's vintage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your mom's on the cover like in her like hot workout wear. it's like wear. purple, right? She's looking so hot. Like, it's a side, blue like... background. She's like giving like a little shoulder oh, tilt. Oh. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to get like all her fitness and diet <laughs> secrets. And then I want to blog about it because this is when I didn't have a podcast. I want to blog about it on the Skinny Confidence. I get the book and there's a whole chapter dedicated to blowjobs and I'm like getting out my fucking neon pink highlighter and it's like she's like I am about to give you the tip to giving head and uh, she's like the literal tip so what you want to do is the you literal do tip the coin stop 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 and you guys have to pick up the book to read the rest what the coin is you really do the co- I'm, yeah, yeah I'm not going to tell you what the coin is you have it's to go just, read the book you know <laughs> Let's sell out the book. This podcast is just full of resources. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, I feel like I'm doing the Lord's work. No, she honestly should have thought through, like, where she kept her books. I remember it was, like, one <laughs> summer. We have a house in Canada on a lake, and my sister comes in our room, and she's like, Amelia, guess what I just found? And I'm like, I'm like, what? I, I don't know. Maybe I was, like, 10, right? That sounds about right. And Delilah's like 13 and she's like, "Mm -hmm, guess what I just found? And I'm like, oh God, I don't know. And she's like, you want to know how to give a blowjob? And I I was like, okay. And she was like, okay. And then we start reading it and then we realize, holy shit, this is our mom telling how to give a blowjob. But my sister, when she was 19, she was like, yeah, like I'm pretty sure she was like the blowjob queen in high school. Sorry, dad. Hope you're not listening. Um, Listen, he put a ring on it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have to be good at giving a blowjob. That's oh. a that's a skill that I sharpen on a daily on a day to day basis. See, uh, I'm just not really a sexual person. I wish I was, but I'm just not. It probably has something to do with my hormone stuff and things like that. I'm just like not. But you have a boyfriend. I do have a boyfriend. So how do you guys make it work? Is he more sexual than you are? Well, it's not that like one of us is more sexual than the other. I just feel like. I don't need sex in my life. Like, I'm not, like, I don't always crave it. And I'm not, like, you know, the first one to make the move all the time, which is, like, the biggest thing we need. We always have to work on in our relationship is, like, I need to work on, you know, making the first move. And I just lack that. I don't know. I just don't. I, don't. I think that's really self-aware. No, it is. And I, and I work on it all the time. Well, but I brought you like, coconut oil lube all over oh, the table. Oh, I want you to know so, this is his favorite thing in the whole entire world. Okay, take we'll it send home. Him, we'll no, send this him is all for you. This is <laughs> all for you. I brought you oh. all the coconut oil lube. Wait. What's your boyfriend's name? Cute. What are these pink ones? Those are freshies. Oh, for That's me. for after sex. Um, you can you, clean up. Yeah, co- yeah oh, you yeah. him, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his name's Mercer. Mercer? Um, That's a cute name. I love him so much. He's so Where did you guys meet? Tell us all the details. That is a cool name. It is, right? Hmm. We met. I had just broken up with my former boyfriend and I was like ready to be an independent bitch. And then I just like was at my sister's apartment one day. She was out of town and I like had my a few friends over and my one of my best friend Snick was like, oh, I'm going to bring my friend Mercer over. And I was like, OK, like fine. Like we were literally just watching a movie. And then like I don't know if you've ever had this feeling, but like when he walked in, I don't even think I like registered what he looked like I was just like him like that's the one like I didn't even have a conversation with him or anything it was almost like his energy and like his aura was just like affecting me and I'm like not really one to say aura I don't even think I've ever said that in my whole entire life but it really happened like I was like whoa then I like stalked him and um he's just like a normal kid he went to Beverly um very normal 
he has six siblings, five siblings. Um, they own Fat Burger and um, now Johnny Rockets, which is dope for them. And just like the I used most. I love Johnny Rockets. Great Same. Oh, great. great. We need to go It's going to be Rockets. good again. It's, they're going to get it. I love get it. Johnny Rockets. Let's go there. The, um, milkshake, maybe Mercer yeah, will hook it up right? with a milkshake. Oh, you know, yeah. You, are you can afford Wait, also, did you know Fat Burger has Craig's vegan milkshakes? I feel like you'd be interested in that. Oh, my God. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Craig's is like doing all the strategic partnerships. No, like. That's so random. I think I said that same. I thought for a second, I, I think Lauren had that same aura, but then I was thinking maybe it was just your tits. Oh, you, you're saying I had a good aura when yeah, I walked I in the room. Aura, I, like, oh, I hit you in the face. I was like, oh, oh, but then, and then I thought, I was like, maybe it wasn't aura. Maybe it was just those cannons. I don't know. Do you like having big boobs? Because I hated it. I have always had big boobs ever since I was little, but mm-hmm. I wanted bigger ones. So I right. got implants at 18. And then really? 18, they were fine the, before. Literally the day I graduated, the day you're after lying. I, them, I saved up all my money all through high school and the day I graduated I booked oh, like the appointment. You knew. Like I knew. And oh then after I got them I had to get them redone again 10 years later. Do I like it? I don't I think that eventually I will get them taken out and mm-hmm. get fat from another area into my tits. That's like the new thing. Like why not? Like But you know when she got pregnant it was out of control. Because I don't these think things, they were that big when dude, I got pregnant. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was worried about myself. Oh, I was God. like if one of these things hits me I could be out cold. I didn't think they were that big. <laughs> But but that's also because you're wearing like the maternity bras, right? Ugh, and you're like you don't you know, like don't fucking nursing. Someone needs to make like new bras. Horrible. What do you mean? I wear them every day. A nursing bra? Yeah. Oh well, my. this one's actually my Skims one. Why? But I like Skims. That's what I'm wearing that's too. That's what I'm. Oh. Michael's um, gonna pop a book. <laughs> Like, Taylor, are you okay? Taylor, do you have a Taylor, pulse? Um, Taylor's sweating back there. <laughs> no, like I mean, like Taylor's I'm, eyes are popping. I'm literally wearing a sports bra. Honestly, I'm really starstruck that Taylor's in the room. Like I hear a lot about Taylor. Taylor, did you say hi? Hi, Taylor. Really? <laughs> oh, wait, come That's on. the quickest he's ever gotten his mic. Let me tell you something. I've been, I mean, it's on, it's an ongoing, like, probably beat to death joke on this show. I'm like, why is the mic never on? This guy never has a mic. Of course, you come on. <laughs> And he's like, the mic is like, oh. wait, I just didn't know that you would have long hair, Taylor. He's been oh, waiting to long. chime in. My, I, I haven't had a haircut in a while, but it's I'm I'm sick of it. It's I done. just really didn't picture you I'm like a, this. I like do it. you like him with long hair? I don't know you otherwise, but I like it. Oh, she likes it. Oh, now he's never going to grow. He's going to grow it to his fucking asshole <laughs> Maybe now. Maybe I'll keep it long. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't, I, you out, know, I don't Mercer. look good today. He's texting so his barber right good. now saying cancel the appointment. <laughs> He's so excited. Okay, so a lot of girls wrote in about your beauty secrets. Let's start with your skin. Okay. I'm on my period currently. Sorry for the TMI. But when I'm on my period, I feel like because my thyroid – I don't know if you feel this, but because my hormones are already kind of fucked up, like I just feel like my period hits me hard, like really hard. That's why I was such a bitch last week. Yeah. Blame it on my thyroid. Like it – it started to hit me really hard to the point where I had to up my Lexapro dose 10 milligrams every time I'm on my period. Like, it hits me hard. Not only hormonally, but, like, really emotionally. Like, when I'm, like, Mercer, I am so sorry. Like, I, I just need four days. Like, give me four days and then I'm back. I always text him. That's or, like, what I'm going to say. I call him and I'm, like, I'm really sorry. I'm going to be shitty for the next four days. Like, I'm really sorry. But that's that. And then he's, like, I know. I get it. Also, he has two sisters and, like, grew up. Right next to his sister and him are 22 months apart. This motherfucker so like, has two sisters and he doesn't give me a fucking break. Yeah, I don't know shit. What's going on? You know what? Lauren waits. Lauren does the opposite. She waits till day four and I was like, oh, by the way, this whole oh, time. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, also, like my dad grew up with just girls in the house. Like, I mean, like my sister, my mom, my fish, my dogs, like just girls. <laughs> and Poor so God. he'd he'd always be like, oh, guys, like you got to really explain to your boyfriends, like, you know you know, you know, like that's about it. Like, you know, you got to really tell them. And he'd always be like, like when I was like maybe 15 and got my period, he was like, are you PMSing? Like, I know you are. And like, he just made it so normal. But at the same time was like, men don't know how to handle this. So like, we need to talk about this. Like, and he like really taught me how to like have that conversation. That's a good, actually a good, really, really smart Well, because like, if you think about it, like no man ever is going to know not only what we feel when we have our periods, and I'm not like being like, you know, that crazy feminist right now, but like no guy knows what that feels like. I don't know about you, but I get the worst back cramps ever. Like, oh my God, they hurt so bad. I have to take prescription ibuprofen. It's like 600 milligrams. It's crazy. And all my, all the women in my family steal it from me. Um, 
And I just get like I'm the biggest bitch. No, they fucking take their dick out of their out of the little like little hole, that's, that's what we the do. little hole where they unzip their fly. They piss around. They stick it back yes. in there. They don't even wipe with toilet paper. I know. They shove the balls back in, and then they wait, wait, they hold don't on. hold on. Hold they on, don't on. even wash their hands. I know. They hold flap on. it under hold the on. water for a second. Wipe it on their jean wait, and think, fucking close wait, the door on. and touch the door handle. Let me tell you where you're wrong. You think that us guys go and pull our dick and balls out at the same? You pull the whole thing. Out? Okay, wait. I have a question. Sure. I asked my boyfriend the other day. We were talking about underwear. I just like love to sleep in his Calvin Klein's, and he got sick of it because I was stealing them. And then like boxers, briefs. Whitey no. tighties? No. What? So, What's a whitey tighty? Like the little, the thong one. Like uh, everyone wears the whitey tighties that you wear. No, some, sometimes it is. Wait, some, actually, some, do you? I'm no, sorry. No, no. That mostly, mostly I'm the briefs. It's not like, my sister's boyfriend does thongs. Do. No, you know what I'm talking no, about. No, but like you know, like the closer the speedo one, the oh, speedo one. Yeah, but like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so no, like I just like the baggy ones, whatever. But like the he boxers. has, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he has like a little bit tighter ones, like briefs. Yeah. And uh, I was stealing them, but then I was like, no, I'm gonna order myself some boxers because like I like to sleep all loose and nice anyways he got mad at me for stealing them so anyways i was like so what is this hole like oh, <laughs> well let me explain no, it to you wait wait so then i'm like what is this hole like can you i go can you please show me how you pee mm -hmm. and he's like he's like you you want to see how i pee like what and i was like yeah like can you pretend that you're like at your urinal right now yeah. and pee they don't even use the hole. Well, hold on. It depends. Sometimes, like, these ones are button fly. I'm going to so, pay attention to this, so you better no, no, say it right. Are, these are button fly, so i got to rip the whole thing out and let it go. But I don't right. pull, nobody pulls the balls out unless, unless they No, but, like, do you really just, like, take your you, penis out of and just put it through the hole I of your underwear? I feel like you flop it over the fucking no, like, Calvin no, Klein. No, it depends. Right? It depends what That's pants. what they say yeah, they do. But, yeah, you pull it through the hole sometimes. Sometimes you, go over the, sometimes you go over the head. Sometimes you go through. Okay, but what about the little zipper hole? Like, do you stick it out of there? Well, and then there what if you, you zip it back? That's why I'm not a big fan of the zipper. I'm a button fly guy because the zipper can get caught. You, you know? are a zipper. I've seen you with no, the, the, the like zipper. The I've seen your dick no, popping out of the zipper. No, uh, you know, with, something about Mary this, moment. With the zipper, though, I pulled the whole thing and I let the, let it go. But I don't. With the button fly, I can pull it through the whole. It's, it's like I don't need to see you pee. Like I, mean, I don't need to see like I mean, a limp tadpole. I'll be, I'll be, I'll it's be honest. so horrible, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Every time boys take an interview, I'm like, Bleh. I have to bring in three or four people to help me get it out. But oh right, right, right. I forgot. I forgot. Taylor, Taylor, are you more of a boxer person? Or I've never used the hole ever right I pulled, I pulled the shaft out but again i don't pull the Hold balls on. out i want to tell you something i think you're the only guy i've ever come across that uses no. the hole no i no you don't use the hole you don't, and then the zipper you don't then you open the whole thing can you sh give us a tutorial no, the, right now the, <laughs> the, the hole from your boxers Oh, I thought you were about the jeans. No, because like you know how women. Oh, hold on. Okay. I okay. Get what you're do, you, do you stick your penis out of the hole of <laughs> the boxer? No, no, no. I can't I'm wait more, for your I'm... partners to hear this. What do you do? What do you? Yes. Do you... <laughs> hold on, I want everyone to listen to this. So I sometimes I open the top butterfly okay. and okay. then I flop it out from the top over the box. Okay, but here's my thing. I thought you were talking okay. about the paper. You guys the no, 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 no. don't use toilet paper. You're all gonna say you do. You fucking fling wait, it on, back in. Wait, can we talk about the, the drips of pee that happen? <laughs> so, People don't. People have not mastered the shake. You gotta give it the shake. Oh, the shake is ah! even grosser. I'm like literal projectile vomiting. Don't come near me with your fucking penis for like a week. But no. But listen, they don't have toilet paper at the urinal. What do you mean? Oh, this is true. There's no. You think there's a toilet paper thing at the so urinal? So you guys all shake your fucking piss against the urinal, and you all just have shaked piss. What do you that think? You happening? guys are spreading coronavirus. But yeah, but also like, is it normal for a guy to use a urinal? Because I asked my boyfriend too. Like. Yes. Do you just stand next to someone and just like, you're like yeah, hey. it's a little, it's a little. Like weird I would sometimes. look, I would look. I'm not a any fan. girl would look. Do you look? Um, no, you would listen. No, it's a, it's a like a, it's a like a known. Uh, what am I? What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a known rule. Like you don't look. You don't. But look. you've looked. Like you've talked. No, to but people. like guys don't like take showers together or go pee no. together. So we have to remember I mean, that. Listen, like I, I don't want to. I speak don't know. For, I feel Taylor no, used to I've, do I've circle jerks. Never, <laughs> like if never, Taylor, you for never. sure done a fucking. Here's how it works. If Taylor and I both went in there at the same time. Yeah. You keep eyes straight ahead. Straight, you straight don't, ahead. Not, Taylor's eyes are all over the place. No, I don't I, buy it. No, I honestly, I swear to God, you don't I've, swivel I've around never because people look at you. And what, what would happen if you did swivel around? Would you well, get you like beat go, up? Well, I don't. It, I think it depends who it is. Like, okay. If it's some perv, how you might do you get know made. these rules? It's unspoken rules. It is for for men. Like men aren't like, oh my god, like we need to go to the bathroom. Like we like come to the bathroom. If I went in and there was some stranger and I was just like, hey, buddy. I just can't believe that you guys are all in the urinal shaking off your pee. Or helicopter. Oh, yeah. That is not yeah. kind of Terry. Circles? And then you guys think that you don't have to wash your hands. No, I, I wash the hands. You wash them yeah, every time. I wash the hands. Too. Taylor is such a no, liar. No, because it's like, you know, when you think about it, like men actually have to touch 
you know, there are things to pee. Women, all we do is take the toilet paper and wipe. Like, they're cool. actually touching something. You're touching your balls and your penis. Well, sometimes if you get a good flop, you can just flip it over and you don't have to touch anything. You just let it hang down. Just when you guys think that you weren't going to learn <laughs> every single dead. thing on the Skinny Confidential Him and Her, surprise you are. Stop. Now you know how guys piss. You know what I think about? Ugh. <sighs> What do you think about? Like, like we're sitting here, like sometimes these things get picked up by publications. Like, imagine if they just picked up, like, hey, this guy. Oh my god, like do they flop. really? He's just gonna flop it over the thing. Oh my god. Okay. Wait, I need to check my notes while you're asking me a question. I'm, I'm sure this I'm was hitting. this in your notes. Was this? You was this, check, yeah, this, this was number one, <laughs> and it's crossed off now. Okay. I'm glad. Um, I'm, glad I'm glad we got we, that. We yeah, are so Thank good you. with your answer. Anything else yeah. you guys want to know before, <laughs> before we before we move on? <laughs> Okay, so I want to know your skin tips because we started getting on at four skin tips and we don't need to know about four skin <laughs> that tips. That was really good. We need wow. to know about your skin tips. Wow. Wow, what a transition. That was really good. Um, I swear by keeping it simple. Um, when I was 12, I had like really bad like bumps on my forehead. I wouldn't call it cystic acne. Bump on, bumps on my forehead, bumps on my chest, bumps on my back until I was like, 16 and then went to Coachella. Everything good happens at Coachella for me, clearly. Went to Coachella and got like the worst breakout of my whole entire life on my chest and on my back. I wouldn't go on set for so long. I was so self-conscious. I would literally cry myself to sleep. Like when I say bumps, I literally mean like thousands of bumps down my back, down my chest. Like why? We didn't know. And I was always super lucky to like not have acne on my face. And the only times I really get bad acne is like altitude or hormones or if I'm like using a face wash that my skin is too sensitive for. Um, But so yeah, crazy bumps. And I thought it was the end of the world. Like I thought I was going to die like this and I was so depressed and I had never really truly grasped how acne can like make you depressed because I just never had it. So anyways, that happened. Went back to my friendly man at uh, Cedar sinai uh, special disease control situation. He gave me like this really retro like wash to use. It like didn't work at all. So after multiple visits at the doctor, I started washing my chest and back with Necessaire body wash. I love that body wash. Eucalyptus. Cleared my whole entire skin. And I always praise to them. Like, I don't know what's in your body wash or what's not in it, but it literally changed my life. Necessaire, you need to sponsor. No, like it that. changed my whole entire life. From the body scrubs to the lotion to the body wash to literally everything. And then, like, there's a brand that you can get from Amazon. Like, Necessaire takes a little bit longer to come. And, like, I feel like I have to really plan it out. Like, when my bottle's going to be done. There's this brand called Native. I use their deodorant. It's, like, the only healthy deodorant that works on me. I know you have your ginger one, but I don't know how I feel about a ginger deodorant. It's so good. I don't know. I'll have to smell it. <laughs> Mine is coconut vanilla. But anyways... Native brand also works pretty well because I find with me, I had to eliminate sulfates and parabens. I don't really even know what a sulfate and paraben is. I just know that my skin doesn't like them. Um, and then I use uh, Biologic Recherche. I'm not going to pretend to speak French. That. Biologic Wait, Recherche. Wait, is that the one that has the P50? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that brand so a lot. So I use Let You. I use Let EV. These are all face washes. Okay. And I use let vip o2 i use all those face washes and i alternate um the let e the, the let you is super like dense and creamy and what it is is like this is scary but it's kind of oil based and just to give you a little background of how we found this brand my sister delilah is actually on accutane um, because she has really bad cystic acne and i'm kind of afraid that i'm getting it now too because I've never really had like this situation. You do not have – you like – No, I do. And then there's one between my eyebrows no. and like I just don't know how to handle it when it happens. And like I don't have the right concealer and like I'm sitting there in my bathroom today and I'm like, oh my god, like what am I supposed to do? What concealer are you wearing right at this moment? I'm wearing Dior Backstage. Okay. Dior Air uh, – I don't know. And then I'm wearing Ilia on top of that – Um. And then you said you would talk about your brows okay. and the lamination. I wanted to get my brows laminated. Why don't you like it? Okay. Wait, let me show you what I use. I carry it with me because my brows are so insane. I literally have to carry it with Your me. brows are so gnarly. I um, love no, it. No, they're so gnarly. Like, you need if to brush I, your brows up if like I, that. I, you, look like, you look like an old man. No, but like, like men Michael. can do this. If, 
no, that was wrong. But um, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, that was about as wrong. The way you just brushed them up is about how you put your penis back after. Do you, you want to see my eyebrows brush like that? No, like literally. No. How do I do it? Ugh. You can't do that. You can't, like, you what do I look like Botox now? Too. You can't do that. Oh, I love that you get Botox. I mean him. Okay, really, you got. I know what she does. Like, she tricks me. She's like, "Hey, you're just gonna get a little touch." Of it. Next thing I know, I'm just getting <laughs> jammed. If I ever did that to my boyfriend, okay, let me do like a little tutorial. Give him some time. He'll be doing it. <laughs> yeah, give us give us a tutorial. I might film this. Okay, okay. But I I gotta go to my camera. Okay. Okay. So this is what I do. I take this keratin restore mascara okay. or soap brows. Okay. Then you just kind of brush her up in little strokes. Okay. You don't want it to be like too perfect though, cause like it's your eyebrows. But it really is all about like getting this section. You I know? like when women have a thick brow. Yeah, you lo I love a thick brow. You yeah. just, it really doesn't matter about the middle section. It's you about- You want one of those like thin, like- No, I don't like those little skinny things. Uh, if, pff, great, now I'm gonna probably get shit for that. Oh, this guy said doesn't like skinny, it's gonna, you but know. But you need like a brush like this, okay? And you can either get soap and what's breath. the brand? What's that brand? This, I don't know. This is some random brand. Okay, I'm gonna take it's a picture of it because people are gonna ask. Yummy lashes or something. I don't know. I usually use Anastasia, but you know what I realized? Yummy lashes, lashes, keratin restore mascara with Anastasia's br brow gel. What happens to my eyebrows is they get really like hard <laughs> and like crispy. <laughs> Taylor, calm it down back there. <laughs> Taylor just ejaculated. That was a sensual description. <laughs> they get really crispy and I'm not Rock about hard. it. I'm really not. So this is like nice and flimsy with the brows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like your penis after you pee. <laughs> or during your we're pee. Never, we're never going to, like, she's, we have a two hour car ride after this and she's going to. Two hours? Where do you live? We got well, no, we, we no, to go to San Diego. We got to go to San Diego. We got to see the. So I'm sorry. You flew home from Aspen this morning. No. No, uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, I was gonna say you flew home from Aspen. You sat on your couch or did whatever for like two seconds. Then you're here, and now you're gonna drive to San Diego. Do you want to know what I've done today? I woke up at ten, sat on my couch till two, took a shower, and came here. How old are you? <laughs> I'm nineteen. You're nine. I didn't know you were nineteen. Mm -hmm. You seem so much more mature. Well, I thought you were twenty one. See, this is why I don't like telling people my age. You're nineteen. It's because it get, yes, it gets very uncomfortable. Oh my no, it's not uncomfortable at all. Well, I love that you're nineteen. Like I don't I don't know like why I'm different. I just really I didn't know. I just saw Taylor's like, head like literally. He fly just got up he just got up and left. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just Taylor, like, are you okay? He, he's scared. Don't worry, Taylor. I was adjusting my belt. Don't worry, Taylor. It's not illegal anymore. We have a defibrillator back there, just in okay, case we get to this guy. What if she said she's seventeen after we had this conversation? I did not know you no. were nineteen. If, she um, said, if you said you were seventeen after we had this conversation, I'd rip the fucking power lines out of the wall. No, I know. I know. I know. Um, I'd, I be know. The, I'd be on the phone. You with act. Lawyers. You act twenty-one. Well, I, um, all my friends. So my best friend is thirty-one. Um, my other best friend is. Like 25. So you have older friends. Mm -hmm. You're an older okay. soul. Yeah. And um, like we all have this ongoing joke. Like it's not illegal anymore. Because like, I mean, you know, it's weird. Because like even when I was 15, like waiters at restaurants thought I was like 25. Like it, I didn't you, even have to have a your, fake your ID. Your energy is like, more mature. I, I can't I just, explain it. And my parents have this ongoing joke too that like they got my sister and my um, birth certificates screwed up. Because like it very well could have happened. Because my sister was born June 10th, 1998. And I was born June 13th, 2001. But my due date was June 10th and her due date was June 13th. That's weird. And Right? And my parents always have this ongoing joke of like, Delilah is 19 or however old I was at the time and Amelia is 22. Like, this is wrong. This is incorrect. Your parents are going to love that Taylor and Michael and I had a conversation about how to take a piss at the urinal. No, like, what do you mean? I learned how to give a blowjob when I was 12. Like, oh I don't know. Or 10. I don't, I don't need, know. I don't need Harry Hamlin on my tail. I don't, I gotta... <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me. And you know why? Because my... I, you know why I don't want your dad on my tail? Why? Because he's such a handsome man that I would never, ever dream of defending myself like, if he was again. No, would, you know what? I feel I like, be like I would never touch that. He, would, he has this flow going on that you have and he would really appreciate yours. You guys you know, are very similar looking. You have I, similar features. You guys do kind of. I, I bet that. when that when you had friends over, they all they did was just stare at your dad. Well, don't that's, forget her mom. No, that's no, weird. That too, but like no, my mom was definitely the milk. Nobody stared at my dad. People's moms. I would have stared at your people's dad. People's moms just told me I'm obsessed with your dad. Like I used to have your dad's poster. I don't next care to what my bed. Says. Like that's a little weird. But like my dad's 70 now. Did you know that? So like it's different. Your dad looks good. For <laughs> he's like a fucking Benjamin Button. He's, like he's a never. He's <laughs> like a fine wine. You know he's never gotten Botox. That's also why I'm like 
That'd be crazy if my dad got Botox. He looks great. Like, I'm a fan. He says it's because he doesn't wash Clear his face. Clear the record right now on the podcast. Do you care that your mom dances on Instagram? And before you answer, oh my I'm going to say this. I, I need this to happen. love that your mom dances on Instagram. And if I'm not dancing on Instagram and doing that, like, when Zaza's your age, then just shoot me. I want to dance on Instagram. You know Instagram. what? It doesn't even cross my mind. Like I said, my mother used to walk downstairs with her tits out and her butt out when my friends would be over, boy or girl. It didn't matter what friend was there. And um, now she's dancing with her bikini on. That's just lovely. But I'm so sorry. And I'm trying not to be a bitch about it, but it really gets me worked up because like my mom is such a genuinely sweet and loving soul and she would never do anything to hurt a fly. And I think being a mother and like being told by the world that you're the reason that your child went through the hardships that she did, like that's not going to be easy on anyone. Like imagine if like Zaza went through something and like you were solely to blame, like that's not true. And so I think it just like really breaks my heart when people blame it on her because, you know, it really isn't her fault that she was born in such a slim figure. Like literally all of the photos in our house of my mom like she has rock solid abs she has legs like twigs like this is her and I'm just trying to make people aware that like you can body shame a bigger person and you know that will get more attention versus you can also body shame a skinnier slimmer person and that won't be you know something that gets registered in people's brains as body shaming and so like because I you know decided to come out about my eating disorder like I have I feel like I have to now not only support my mom and make sure people know and like are aware that that's not really how it happens or at least that didn't like it's happen your mom for me. is not the cause of, of like any- my mom's skinny body and something that you know like Garcelle said to me was like or said about me was like you know if if I was her like these videos of you dancing because you're so skinny would make me feel bad. And then I take it as like, wow, like am I that much bigger than my mom to the point where I have to feel bad because she's so skinny? And like, yeah, I don't have an eating disorder anymore, but like I did. And I'm, I, I, I do think that like I still get moments of like, you know, the, the mindset that I had when I had my eating disorder or moments of like, well, that was so mean. Like, am I fat? Like, am I really that much larger than my mom like I never really saw it as that like I've never who like compares you're, you're not comparing yourself to your mother I don't, I don't know who listen, compares I, their body I, to their mom I listen to that I watch that show when Lauren has it on I get I get drawn in I oh, thought, same, that, I thought that was a cheap shot I was like I don't like I don't like when Garcelle yeah, did there's that. a there was there's a whole um no and it, it, it's not it, there's a whole like sort of like thing right now where where it's like against against them and I think that, and I like Garcelle I think she's one of the more like reasonable and she's mm-hmm. up front and she's like can it but I thought that was it's just weird really the kids it, in. yeah it threw me off and it was just kind of like look I, I get it that you're the new housewife but like you don't need to bring in a story that you probably know nothing about like mind you she's probably never even read my post on my story she's never I've never even met her so she and I haven't had a conversation about how I actually felt so to bring that up and blame it on my mom my mom already has to deal with so much blame and guilt um regardless so for someone that you know is supposed to be her friend and supportive to say that and catch her off guard it's like you can, th- you, you know, you can be so confident in like everything you do in life, but then it's like someone tells you one thing, like you're going to just listen to that one bad thing versus like all the little good things. Here, so it made me I feel sad about those shows because like, you know, Lauren and I have been we've had conversations about like, would we ever participate in something like that? And most of my answer is like pretty much is like straight like hell no in the beginning because with something my like dad this, has his divorce, divorce lawyer on speed dial. Like that was a thing when my mom was signing up for the show was like. I remember when they first came to my mom to be on my dad was like absolutely not like I swear to god I will divorce you. Yeah, I mean because with something like this and why I like podcast the medium one we control it but mm-hmm. two like you can't have this lengthy of a conversation in a show like that. It's just Mm-mm. it's not sna- it wouldn't be snappy enough. It wouldn't get and enough. And they take those yes. little moments of, you know, when we ask you how to take your penis out to pee <laughs> Or, you know, like versus like yeah. they just put the, the, the actual bites. exactly yes. and then it just becomes this thing of like just craziness. But where I empathize with the people that go on these shows, like here we can just keep going and going long conversation. Right, right. But where I empathize with people that have those to do those shows is 
you kind of like to your point, you enter as a new character. And if you're not getting ratings or attention, you're kind of like out. So you kind of in a way like I got to come in here and bring the heat or else like I'm going to become irrelevant. And yeah. so I think what happens is people, you know, maybe they get in these situations like shit, I'm not performing, I'm not performing, no, I'm going to say I, something wild. And I get it that like it's, that is something that goes down with reality TV. Like they need to one you, up the You next know person. that you have to present something. Otherwise, there's no point for you to be paid to be on this show. Like it's not about how nice you are to your friends. Like it's about drama. So I get that aspect, but like don't bring me into it. And then like when I get brought into it, I just get flooded with comments comparing me to other models that like I do truly look up to. But it's like, when can that just be let go of? How do you deal with like a really horrible internet troll? My mom just taught me to block them. Okay. I just block them. Um, your mom's kind of iconic how she deals well, with Well, that's them. what's yeah, hard about like the housewives because your mom has like just been herself for so – like that's what I'm saying. I heard her for years like on Howard Stern. I think – I swear to God, I think I did. I'm sure you did. And she it, is – It's like, ringing a bell. She's been the same person forever and like she brings that energy to everything, like probably yeah. on and off camera. And so what happens is these other women come on like, shit, I got to compete with Lisa Renna. I better say something. And like it gets to a place where like you, maybe you say something in order to compete with that energy that you don't m want to say, mm -hmm. but you feel the pressure of like, shit, I need to perform for these cameras. But I also feel like there's so much more good than there is bad um especially with like my mom and and our family i feel like we present and ha have a lot better feedback than bad feedback so it's really important to remind yourself like when you do accidentally because like it's kind of inevitable like it's not like first of all i don't spend my days you know hanging out with all my friends are like normal, by the way. Like I don't hang out with anyone that's famous. So like I don't spend my days being like, oh my God, can you take an Instagram photo of me like this? Like, oh my God, can you do this? So like I'm not scrolling through my Instagram treating it like my job. I'm scrolling through it like how all my other friends are scrolling through it. So if I accidentally, you know, scroll through my Instagram and I see a really shitty comment, I'm going to read it. And then that's all that's going to be playing in my head. And then I'm going to get lost in this cycle and I'm going to start reading everything. And then well, like, I, think that's I have a tip. It's a really good I have thing a tip. to distinguish no, I have a tip though. For so I decided one night at 3 a.m. to go on Michael's phone and type in Chihuahua, 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 all in his Google, in his search bar. I said the word Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Chihuahua. I love Chihuahuas 100,000 times in his phone. So he's been served for the last three years with only Chihuahua accounts. So what you should do. It's so annoying. Yeah. Wait, actually? Yeah. Like, no I'll, I'll no still, girls, no porn, like my no, no feed, fucking nothing. My feed will sometimes chihuahuas. just be chihuahuas and I'll find myself following things. I mean, how did you think to do this? I don't know. I just have weird thoughts. That's a, that's a little scary. Psycho. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tip for everyone. You could do ferrets. You could do sea monkeys. Whatever your heart desires. Anyways. Sea monkeys. I like those. You could do ferrets. You could do sea monkeys. Whatever your heart desires. Anyways. Sea monkeys. I like those. What you should do is you should go to your phone and you should say and type into Google and into your search bar. So what do you have? So for me, like I want to, like I like to consume accounts like Melissa would help mm -hmm. or like just positive accounts. Um, you know, if I have a friend I really like, I'll type her name in like a hashtag. I really like I type it in. So I'm only mm. served content that's like, you know, recipes or like mm -hmm. how to brush your brow up, like just stuff that's not negative. Yeah. And I think it's so hard because there is so much comparison in this industry. And then like, you know, a lot of the times I'll find myself and I'm just like, you know, like it's been four years of me like trying to be like this high fashion model. Like, do I just give up? Like, is that, you know, am I in? You're 19. You have so I know, much I know. But then I'm like, like, am I on the right path for myself? And then I had a conversation with my friend last night. I was feeling kind of down and she was like, where you are is where you're supposed to be. And you cannot compare yourself to the Kylie Jenners of the world who are 23 and have a billion dollars in their bank account. Like you just can't because it's just not reality and you are where you're supposed to be and that's that i just think it's really hard being compared to situations that i'm not close to and i'm working very hard to get to it's like people think that i am and i'm just like not like i'm just trying to be my own person write my own story you know do my own thing yet it's always a comparison but i think i have to always remind myself like yes this is one bad comment but like there's so many more good and like I don't usually get a lot of hate. Like I am right now because the housewives and I will tomorrow because I tell Garcelle to fuck off. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, so I just have to remind myself like I, I, it's fine. Like, you know, you're a really nice person. Like, and I always like in my notes, I wrote this for today. Like my motto is kill them with kindness. Like I think it's the most attractive thing ever to be kind. I'm nice to pretty much everyone unless you've done something really bad to me. 
the thing about me is that I'm just really shy when you first meet me. So I really do come off as a bitch. Um, I just, I am like, I'm really shy. And so I think that's what's hard for me is like everyone thinks I'm just like the biggest bitch in the world because I'm just so shy but that's the that's the whole thing with like life you they're showing like five seconds of your life on right. housewives and there's so much more to it that people need to understand mm-hmm. Robert Green is one of my favorite authors and he was on this podcast yesterday and he says that we're so used to comparing ourselves to what everyone else is doing and what we tend to do is we compare ourselves to people that are ahead of us and he says, when is the last time that you compared your, yourself to someone who's not ahead of you? Never. So when, never. That's crazy. Never. And he said, start doing that. So what wow. he said is he had a stroke. So he used to go outside after his stroke and he would say, oh my God, look at that guy riding his bike. Look at that guy running. Gosh, this sucks that I, that, that I can only walk. And then one day he went outside and he said, wow, look at that guy in the wheelchair. He can't use his legs. Mm-hmm. Look at that old man that's on the ventilator, you know, sitting sitting over by, on the hospital bed. Well, I mean, I've done that, but but it's not like a constant thing. Like, you know. You're more inclined to compare yeah. yourself to like what you don't have. Mm-hmm. So I think if that gives The problem you some with that though, line of thinking, no, I agree with Lauren's, but the problem with comparing yourself to something you don't have is that it's a, it's a never ending cycle. Exactly. Have you heard experience stretching? Mm-mm. I forget who who it was on Tim Ferriss's show and he had, oh my God, I'm going to forget. And I've, t- I've talked about it here before. It's not from me, mm-hmm. but I heard it and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So like experience stretching the idea is like one day you're sitting there and you see the most beautiful sunset in the world and you look to your right and the person you're with like, wow, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It can't get much better than this. Life is the best. Mm-hmm. Then a year later, you're seeing like same sunset. Maybe you have a nice glass of wine and you're in the South of France like, wow, it can't get better than this. Then like a, a year later, you're on a yacht, same sunset, glass of wine. It can't get better than this. And then a year later, like maybe you see that same sunset and it's the original setting and you're like, wow, this is depressing. I hate this. So the thing that used to mm. make you the happiest actually ends up making you the saddest. So it's like, like doing cocaine and trying to get the first high. Yes. And again. It's, and it's, so what the problem is, is we all, like when you're comparing all the time and looking ahead and looking ahead, like mm-hmm. you can't get to a place where you're happy because there's always going to be something right. that you want more and more. And, and that's more. how I, I, I catch myself a lot when I'm, you know, just alone and I'm in my feels or when I'm taking my morning walks, I like to just put my AirPods in and listen to my my skinny confidential, his and hers really quickly because <laughs> sometimes I don't want to get caught up in my thoughts that are kind of negative and self-sabotaging. And, you know, my mom always, always emphasized, like, don't feel bad, feel grateful. I don't even really know what this means, but she was always like, you know, when Delilah or myself, we'd be like, oh, you know, like, I really feel bad, blah, blah. She would just always say, don't feel bad, feel grateful. As long as you're grateful, then you have nothing to feel bad about. Like, as long as you're grateful for everything you have in your life, you know, but that's hard to actually practice. It is a practice, though. It's yeah. a practice that you have to do every day. You have to be aware of your thoughts. This morning mm-hmm. I woke up, Joe Dispenza says you wake up and the first thing you think is it's a negative. negative. Yeah. So today I woke up and I tr- almost went there and then I t- completely it's turned hard. it into a positive. But like you have to just be like aware of what mm-hmm. you're thinking and like watch yourself from an outside perspective. 100%. Yeah, but Lauren, it gets, I mean, you're so young. I mean, it gets better. It's not like we've like, I mean, mm-hmm. it's been a long time of us trying to, we're still like struggle with it. So, right. like, it never... When I was 19, I was literally naked on the bar dancing. Oh, like, fuck. yeah, like, I could you're, never. You're so like, you're good. But sometimes I'm like, do I wish I was doing that? Do I wish I was having the frat house experience? But then I'm like, no, no like not, no. maybe not with COVID right I, now. <laughs> I just don't think it's me and that's okay. You know, it wasn't me. I didn't do that experience. And listen, how did you get own. naked on the table then? I was, I was just naked on the table. Cause I was just in the restaurant. I was naked oh. under the no, table. No, I was like, oh, I, okay. okay. I had a very much okay. like, um, like, wait, you guys um, knew each other when you were 19? No, but when we were 12. 12. What? Yes. That's we haven't been together the whole so time. flipping we cute. We haven't been together the whole time. 12? Though. Yeah. That's really cute. 12. I wasn't with him at 19 though. I was I was uh, popping my puss like. <laughs> Wait, that's really <laughs> cute. Yeah, we we knew each other. And I worked we... I worked in a um, restaurant like very much like um, sir like like that. The, I yeah, just the started Vanderpump Rules. Dynamics of that. So okay. that's what I mean. I I didn't do the whole frat thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael did the frat thing. Yeah. You did the frat thing. Well, you went to Arizona. You, you had to. the to. frat thing with a fucking like. Uh, you had to. I'm lucky because my boyfriend's but not a frat guy. I'll either, tell you, so. I wasn't necessarily a frat guy, but I. We, I what I, are you talking no, about? You, you were the warden. No, but I'll tell you why. We. I it went was to a Arizona. different time. No, I went to Arizona. There's nothing to do. Uh, Arizona but, is the no, party school. University of Arizona. Not the one in Tucson. 
So like you, you know, went to the one in Tucson. In Scottsdale, the one you went to is worse. No, in Scottsdale, there's a bunch of shit to do. But it, in Tucson, when I was there, it was just like a big desert. There's not a lot to do. Wait, the party. one that's party one is AU, right? A no, it's U? U, U, U of, I went to U of A. U, U of A is, U of a is the party one. Yeah, well, no, it was wild. But I'm saying you you kind of had to be in a frat in order to like be yeah. in a party. There's nothing. There's no bars. Oh, there's no things Wait, to were do. you in Tucson? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. I got lost in Tucson once. Tucson's a pretty <laughs> wild place. But um, I, I need to know something. Okay. What are the questions? Lauren's trying to get off that. No, because I want to. No, you can go on it. Go down the road. We don't have all day though. Like. I know. We've been going for a while. Okay. So I want to ask this question. Who is your favorite housewife and why? I guess besides your mom. I know who no, you're going to say. No, I don't think my mom is. I, I think I know who you're going to say. Um, I don't know. I do. A lot of people ask this. Uh, really think hard because a lot of people. I don't want to offend anyone. I love you all except for a few. Um, <laughs> but let's see. I would have to say Dorit. Oh, I thought you were going to say Erica Jane. I know. but Dorit's like, fab. But like everyone knows that like Erica is my girl. So like I got to switch it up a little. So I think – Dorit right now is, is really, you know, in the lead. Her kids are so cute. Like, all I do is just, like, watch her kids baking. And she's so chic. And she's just so fab. And, like, I just feel like the time and effort she puts into all of her looks is so fascinating. And I'm like, wow. Like She's misunderstood, too. When she first came yeah. on, I don't think people understood her. I mean, look, when she first came on, I was confused, too, because there was a lot going on. I still, in the accent, I'm sometimes you know, I love a dynamic. But I just, oh, I'm obsessed with Dorit. Like I really am, and she's like so. Like I just feel like we get along. Like they all kind of understand that I'm like not really 19, and they later just treat me like a normal human. And I can't it's just, believe like, you're great. 19. No, I know. I know. I shouldn't have told you, honestly. Imagine how I was when I was 17 trying to go to clubs. I mean, I don't go to clubs anymore because, like, I outgrew that and I'm not even 21. But imagine me being, like, 15, 17, going to clubs, being like, yeah, like, I'm um, 22. Like, I, I feel like I've been lying about my age forever. And then, like, I got followers on Instagram and had to stop. Like, Taylor's, I don't even have Taylor's a fake ID anymore. Taylor's probably on your Instagram right now. Honestly, my Instagram isn't good. Okay, you have to leave our audience with a book, a resource, a podcast. Okay, that you that has brought you a lot of value. Intuitive eating. Okay. By Elise Reich. Ooh, this is a good one. Talk about this. She's a my bit. therapist. Okay. Um, my dietitian slash therapist. I only see her now. I see her every every Tuesday, but now because of quarantine, I see her Intuitive every eating. other week. I'm writing this down. It's called Intuitive Eating. She has a lot of books under the umbrella of Intuitive Eating, and she basically was like, quote unquote, creator of an Intuitive Eating, which basically means just like the practice of listening to your body, whether it's full or it's hungry or it's starving or it's wanting to go on a run or if it's not wanting to go on a run or if it's, you know, it's just really listening to your body, and I think that's changed my life. Like, I used to work out and be like, ugh, I don't want to go to boxing today. Like, oh my God. Like, I have the worst stomach ache I've ever had today. Like, ew, I'm obviously not working out. But four years ago, I probably would have. Because like, God forbid I go a Tuesday without working out. Like, it's not even the weekend. Like, that could never happen. Um, but now it's just um, – I feel like a lot of the stress stress and cortisol has been taken off of my body because I don't push myself and I really listen to what my body has to say, whether it's if I want to have regular pizza for dinner, if it's I want to have cauliflower pizza for dinner or, you know, whatever it is or whatever it may be, if I need that cookie or whatever, I don't think about it in like the part of my brain that's, you know, anorexic. I think about it from the part of my brain that's like, what does my body need? You know, and that's like exactly how you you intuitive eat. That's well, what, yeah, and I feel in. like you do. Yeah. Like when you talk about how you don't really care no, about food that much. Eats. Well, it's I just think like, I, that's you don't. He he just doesn't get the energy. I kind of stay how quiet when do. it comes to these issues because I I definitely like I'm not an expert, but I right. But in my own life, if I guess if intuitive, I only do things that like speak to my body. So if I get full, I stop eating. If right. I feel like a pizza, I eat a pizza. But a lot of people struggle with this sure. because there's yeah, they do. you know there's they so do. much around food. I remember like. I would talk to my friends and I'd be like, wow, like I can't believe, you know, that person just got that whole plate of pasta from Il Pastayo and they didn't eat all of it. And like they took the rest home. Like I was that girl that was like scarfing it down because I restricted myself so much from ever eating those things that when it was in front of me, I had to savor the moment and like really indulge. But now that I don't have any restrictions on what I eat, you get to the table and you're like, 
Okay. I do feel if guilty sometimes when you go to a nice place and you don't eat. I think it's just like you don't no, want to say. No, but I just take it. No, home. but that's okay. Yes, you're not supposed to eat everything yes. because, like you've also mentioned, the portions in America are absolutely wow, out of control. I ordered a burger the other day. It's it's as big as my head. I it's, can't believe it. That burger looked so. I think good. It's it like, was good. You but know, like, it, I don't need to eat the whole thing. Yeah, I think people feel pressure because like they're like, I got, I bought this, I got to eat it, or like mm-hmm. maybe they grew up in a way where like a parents forced, and like for me, and I was also listening to that. It. I was not forced by my parents, but by like people that we knew, a family that we knew would force us to finish like our milk and like all of our vegetables and shit. And I think that also fucked me up. Like, I'm telling you, I don't know if you heard that story. But yeah, I, was, I did. When I was a kid, I just stared this dude down. He yeah. to the point where he just sent me home. I heard that story. That was crazy. Like, I could really relate myself. to that. Yeah, yeah, no one wants to be forced. So intuitive to eat. eating, great book. Okay. Um, listening to your body will change your life. I swear to God. She and you should come back on the podcast together at some point. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to talk to her. She's probably oh very God. interesting. She really is. Okay. Um, And she's super cool. And she's like 75 and like sort of hippie and like And you cool. said her name is? I- uh, Elise Reich. Elise Reich. Okay. Um, okay. So that's what you recommend. Where can everyone find you on Instagram, Twitter, blast yourself out? Um, I think I'm verified on Twitter, but I don't even have the app. And I've never been on it in my whole life. I love it. So not Twitter, probably. Um, don't have a Facebook, but have an Instagram. It's Amelia Gray. You know, like my Instagram's really just like my portfolio. So I don't really post that many interesting things on my life. That's why it's so fun. I, I feel like I do with my stories. Like I always sit down and I'm like having a rant. Um, but like on my feed, it's not like it, it is yours. Like how you're just, you know, really talkative and things. Like it's pretty much just selfies trying to get like – yeah, it's just like your portfolio. You look pretty hot on your Instagram. Well, it's just like your portfolio. Thank you. But it's just like your portfolio. You know, like I, I feel like I used to post so much about the eating disorder stuff, but like I don't want to be like the girl with the eating disorder anymore. You're not like, trying to be the poster child. I bet no. you've helped a lot of people though. And I have, which feels so amazing. But it's time to recreate and move on. Renovation. And- <laughs> Renovation, <laughs> baby. <laughs> and renovation um, yeah we're just gonna like move on from that i'm still always here to help people and i'm gonna give my my tips and stuff but like it's time to not be amelia gray eating disorder good good for you yeah i like it i we learned how to do the coin or we didn't learn how but you can go learn how to do the coin renovation renovation and you can go to amelia's instagram to see her portfolio she looks great (laughs) thank you for coming on (laughs) thank you for doing this you're a natural can i do one of your ads yeah Yeah. go go do it woo never woo okay wait really quickly i'm not not paying you a single cent okay it's fine really quickly before i do it can you explain the um like I, I've sat the here vagina. and tried to figure out the vagina with the two balls next yeah. to it for a long time. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. That's what it you is. You were just like, let's do like a V with two dots next to yeah. it. Yeah. Michael didn't say that. Let's no, no, do no, a I V with say, two dots. I didn't say like. If it were up to you, you would have no. had it coming out of your like. <laughs> Creatively, me. I'll tell the story. Me, Weston, Lauren, we sat around and we talked about this for forever. And like, we just like spitballed all these different names and all these Mm -hmm. different things. We're like, woo, it's like Shakespearean to like woo a woman. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't like we all came up with it. And then we're like, okay, what looks cool? That W, it's kind of like a inverse of the W. Yeah. yeah. And then we just like the way it looked and like vagina, two balls, kind of funny. I've really thought this through. Okay. Let's see. You do your one with your quickies, which is really funny when you take them to the dinner table and you're yeah, like, you take them to the dinner table. yeah, like, so Woo More Play, um, it's made with, co- it's called Coconut Love Oil. It's made, fuck, I, I really need more information. It's made with stevia. coconut stevia and um, other things and you can lick it, suck it and fuck it. And <laughs> it's natural, 100%, tastes delicious. And um, you can use it when you're alone or with your partner. Taylor and then uses it all day long. These are the freshies that you can, you know, clean yourself or the other person, and it's great and it's Sold. natural. Sold. Sold. I'm gonna need you to sign about five release forms. <laughs> yeah, because we're 19. Years I know. Old. No, no, no. Okay, but that. but the the packaging literally says. Taylor, like, pull like all these like clips and get some Facebook ads up and running. <laughs> Every Please time tell be- your mom. Thank you for telling me about the coin. I'm blessed. Michael's blessed. Wait, when you say the coin, like you're talking about like the two fingers, yeah. like yeah, yeah, she's. Do you use this one? This is the one. This is how you do it. Just like this. But then, like, don't you feel like your other fingers are awkward? Like, they're just, like, sticking out like this? Or do you, like, put I, I, them... No one cares if they're awkward. <laughs> oh. I don't think he's ever looked at my fingers. Oh, really? I'm not looking Have at you ever like, looked at I'm my like, fingers? I'm not, like, no, one... I swear to God, this has crossed my mind. Like, I'm, I'm like, what like, do I do with these three? I don't think there's a guy in the world that's like, eh, that finger placement's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> Is my mind okay? No, the These fingers, are the things no that I think about. No one's looking at the fingers. None of us Taylor, are okay. have you ever looked at a girl's fingers when she's blowing you? 
Hold on, he's not annoying. Wait, he's not annoying. No, not at all. Are you kidding me? You've really? never. The well, Taylor, out. for you, it's only thirty seconds, so you don't have time to look at the fingers. Wait, why do we roast Taylor? Oh, we. Oh, because... Why do we roast Taylor? Let's let's think about it. Okay, <laughs> you got a fucking he, few hours. <laughs> he, he, you got to listen to the podcast where he went to my wedding and did a speech in front of everyone and told everyone that I'm the beauty at, or I'm the mm-hmm. beast and Michael's the beauty. Don't ruin it. Don't just have her go listen. And to then it. he told me. Uh, okay. He no, no, told no, no, me, and he still works for you. I want to suck down on Lauren. Dick. Yeah, There's a lot the of new line. listeners probably because it's been a long time. And I looked at the analytics and it's a lesser known episode because you ever seen Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Yeah. The Disney show yeah. like back in the day? Wait, I've been on the it. ride too at Disneyland. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we named this episode a long time ago, Mr. Piss Pants Wild Ride. Mm-hmm. And you can just Google TSC podcast, Mr. Piss Pants Wild Ride. And mm-hmm. it, it'll basically tell you exactly what Taylor did at our wedding. Taylor has it a, includes ejaculation getting naked at a strip problem club. too that he talks about. It includes getting naked at a strip club. It included, you told me he can't or he can too fast. No, he's too fast. Oh, sorry, Taylor. Wet enchiladas off my dad's plate with his bare hands and included calling Lauren a beast and that she was going to suck down on her dick at our wedding. Like it, it is a... It, well, it, how drunk was he? Or oh, what drugs? Oh, he was he, blacked out. I didn't even remember. I would wake up the next morning and Michael would be like, with the message saying keep it together no. and I'd be like, oh what, what about I'd be hold like, on what, what about, about the time hey, that my no. friends were sleeping in a bed together and they woke up and taylor was no. hoovering over no, that was them. a setup this Someone was the story me in there. <laughs> the story of the wedding was the first night happened i sent a text like hey man remember we're at the wedding like take it easy it was a little f- i know you're having oh fun. so like you have a problem that was the first day <laughs> the second day i was like yo man remember i sent you the message like take it easy what the fuck and the third day i was like are you fucking kidding me like you're he just he went from Zero to a thousand. You would have thought it was oh, your wedding. Taylor. Yeah, oh, Taylor. It was too much tequila, though. Tequila, I, okay, beer, but I, Mexico, but I, but I get that. that. Like, I do. It was at Palmia, it can, too. It can make you scary. Palmia, did you, you get married at Palmia? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's why I saw that post that you did, and I was like, oh, my God, she's at Palmia. It's the most cathartic, therapeutic place. And then I, the reason that I posted it there was because, like, I was struggling at my worst a year prior at the Palmia. So, like, the Palmia marks so many of my, like, Pummy is the best you know, place on earth. Cummings and oh, life. Cummings. Don't end with Cummings. Cummings Taylor might come. Life. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming on. You guys follow Amelia at Amelia Gray, right? G R A Y, not E Y. We'll forget. link it out. Okay. My Thank middle you. name's Gray. Oh. No, it's not. Yeah. Is it? Yes, it is. When I'm sorry, what? Taylor Gray O'Connor. How? My middle did name I is. Not my middle name is Gray. How are you doing? not call him Taylor Gray. <gasps> Taylor Gray. Uh, Taylor Gray. I think Gray is a beautiful name. It really is. I'm going to name my kid something with Gray in it, but I'm not going to say it because then you bitches are going to steal it. So Taylor Gray. Taylor yeah, you Gray. can't give your name out. Don't no, give your I, name I know. Yeah. And I, I need to know how Zaza came about. I was. I think about that a lot. Zaza came about because there's this famous Hollywood actress that your mom would know called Zaza Gabor. She was fucking fabulous. Just like, like very outspoken, like your mom, unapologetically herself. And I read all her autobiographies. And so I'd go to Michael and say, I'm obsessed with Zaza Gabor. Mm -hmm. And one day he looked at me and he's like, no, 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 it's, it's, it's Zaza. And I was like, oh, I'm naming my firstborn Zaza. Cause it's like, I So do you call her Zaza or Zaza? Zaza. We said, Zaza is Z- Z- no, it's Z-S-A, Z-S-A. It's yeah. a Prussian name. I think okay. I think that's the origins. And I said, like, you're saying it Zaza, but we actually like the name Zaza mm-hmm. better. I just love like, it. Z-A-Z-A. Oh, my God. Her eyes. Thank you. She's so Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Thank you. She's I can't wait to have a kid one day. Oh, my God. You're 19. Oh, I know. But, like, Take starting a family is so fun. Take your time. It's it's, it's a lot fun. of work. So fun. Yeah. I have a dog, so I get it. Yeah. It's I have a French bulldog. She's Kinda pretty like sassy. Kind of like a dog, but it needs your attention at all. It's like mm-hmm. that meme, how much attention do you need? Yeah. And the person's dead. That's how, yeah. that's how it is. <laughs> Where is she now? She's with the sitter at home. She's outside. Oh. She's just sitting waiting for us. Yeah, she's <laughs> in the car. <laughs> yeah, like, let's go play with her. Yeah, I left her down there. She'll be, she'll be okay. <laughs> so like, do you want to play with my dog? Yeah. I'll play with your kid. What kind of dog? <laughs> I have a French bulldog. Cute. Her name's Lady. Thank I you for it. coming on. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. You have a tattoo that says Lady. Yeah. I love it. That was a I fun conversation. Wrong. That went all that the way. You, you got to like sign a release for that. She's 19 years old. No, it's fine, guys. 19's legal. Yep, it is. Michael Mouse. Yep. Oh that makes you sound like a creep. Anyways, had- Amelia, thank you for coming on the show. I had no idea you were 19. <laughs>